Well, time flies. This is part 30 of the Stuart Major Beam Engine Rebuild. This is about finishing the mounting base at last. Now, what I haven't done in this one is shown the sticking on of the planks. I've covered this in other videos, so you should be able to look at those and see how I do it. I use cyanoacrylate adhesive, or CA glue, or whatever you wish to call it, to stick the planks down. What I'm doing at the moment is marking out to drill six holes in the base to allow me to screw this base to the main mounting plinth, the one with the bricks on it. This is the underside of the board and I'm using a countersink in the drill to countersink the holes. I'm going to use some brass screws to fasten these parts together. Even though they're not going to be seen underneath the baseboard, I can be assured that they're never going to go rusty. And I'll probably use one of these cutter screws to drill a pilot hole first. But before I can screw these two parts permanently together, I need to varnish the mahogany. I'm using Ron Seal hard glaze as usual, applied with a cloth. I don't want a massive glossy finish, I need like a floorboarding finish. Almost like waxing, but using a polyurethane varnish so it's more durable and very waterproof. The mahogany planking that I'm using on this baseboard is exactly the same as I would use on the decking of a model steamboat. These half inch planks are available from most model shops and also online although they are getting a little bit expensive these days. I used to get them from a local model shop not far from where I live, and it was very convenient, but unfortunately they closed down. I think they basically ceased trading because all of them got very old and sort of lost interest in what they were doing. There comes a time. Anyway, I'm not ready for that time yet. I've got a long way to go, hopefully. Unless, of course, I get shot with a bow and arrow. <laughs> So what I'm doing at the moment is varnishing the brickwork. It's no good leaving the brickwork just as brickwork because the oil staining from the engine will look bad. So I'm giving the brickwork a really good coat of polyurethane varnish. I'm applying it with a brush, which I don't normally do, but I'm trying to make sure that it goes into the gaps between the brick and seals the mortar as well. But as usual, once I've brushed on the polyurethane varnish, I wipe it off with a cloth. And then, to make sure I haven't missed any parts of it, I go over it again with the paintbrush. And then I wipe it off with the cloth. And I keep repeating this process until the whole surface is covered the way I want it to be covered. And once I've done one side, just for something completely different, I turn the thing round and I do one of the ends. Again, initially I'm applying quite a lot of varnish. I don't need to tell people how to varnish, but you would be surprised how many steam engines I get in that are really badly painted or varnished. And that is why I often apply the varnish with a brush and wipe it off with a cloth, and eventually the cloth gets soaked in the varnish and smooths everything out. Try it, you'll see how easy it is. But do make sure that you wipe off the surplus varnish and wipe it off evenly. I don't want the effect of a tin of polyurethane varnish being thrown against a wall. This is actually quite therapeutic in a weird sort of a way. It's a wipe on wipe off situation and I do find I don't need quite as many of the tablets when I'm doing this. It has a calming effect on me. So the tablets that I take when the voices start are firmly in the cupboard today and not required. My multiple personality disorder is now much better and so is mine. And so is mine. Mine too. And anyway back to the job. What I'm doing here is vanishing the baseboard and vanishing the main part, the middle bit, where the plinth sits. And the reason for doing this is to just waterproof it in case any water ever runs down the side of the engine. And now quickly, before anyone complains, here's a little bit of engineering. This is the eccentric strap, and this is an Allen key. And what I've done is I've drilled a hole in the end of the eccentric strap, which will allow me to adjust the position of the eccentric sheave on the crankshaft. This is to allow minute advancing and retarding of the timing. Because sometimes, if it's a display engine, you want it to be not quite perfect. You want it to be a little bit lazy so it goes over easier over top dead centre. So you can make minute adjustments by doing this without having to remove the eccentric strap every time you want to do it. And finally, before I forget, it's that time where I need to fit the M6 scrub screws into the flywheel ready for mounting the flywheel on the crankshaft. That's it for the moment. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.